of the good shepherd, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I received from my Father. All right, very good. Thank you all for your reading today. So in our, in our, in our first uh, section here, where uh, as verse 6 tells us, uh, this figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So what, what is he saying in, the, in, this, in these first five verses? Uh, so let's, let's think of who are the players that he's talking about here uh, in this, and, and what's the setting for, for these verses? And you're welcome to cheat with the handout if you'd like to, too. You don't have to be creative. All right, so who are we talking about in, in uh, who, are, who are the players in verses 1 through 6? <coughs> well, we, have the, uh, the, we have the thieves and the robbers. And who else do we have in, uh, in these first verses? Yeah, we have a gatekeeper as well. And who else? Sheep. Yes, we have sheep. Amen. And, and I heard it, the, uh, and then we have a shepherd as well, right? So first off, at face value, what is it that, uh, that Jesus is telling us? Well, the first thing he tells us is uh, that how is it that thieves and robbers enter the sheepfold? Well, it's not. It's not by the gate. It's by any other means, any other way then by the one legitimate way, the one legal way, uh, anyone else who comes into the sheepfold is a thief or a robber. And uh, in, in the first century, a sheepfold uh, would, would have been a, a walled off area, either with rock walls or whatnot, uh, with, with one singular open. And of course, within sheepfolds, there would be uh, many sheep, but not necessarily all from the same flock, uh, but all gathered together, the whole sheep of a community. And, and there would, of course, be a, a gatekeeper to, to keep the sheep from going out, but also, yes, to keep those who should not be uh, taking the sheep, leading the sheep, caring for the sheep, to take them away and steal them, to steal or to kill or to destroy. Uh, and so, if you've ever seen the Wile E. Coyote cartoons, uh, there's, there's the, uh, the sheep dog, and then there's, there's Wiley, and he's always tried every way he possibly can to get into that sheep hole, under, over, through, but never by the door, never past that, that sheepdog or that baby people. Uh, and so there is then only one way to enter in, and the one who goes by that way is is who? Shepherd. Yeah, the shepherd. Uh, and and one thing to, to, to point out, we're not talking about <coughs> the shepherd in this point, let's hear. Uh, but we're just talking about shepherds. Shepherds who have legitimate authority to to 
lead and care for these sheep, they are the ones who come by the gate. And so they are the shepherd of the sheep. And what is it that, that happens? The gatekeeper opens to him. So the legitimate way is made open for the legitimate shepherd who will take care of and lead the sheep. But what is characteristic about, about the shepherd here? And really, we can hear this in, in thinking about the sheep. Uh, but what does the shepherd do in, in, uh, in the sheep? He calls them. Yeah, he calls them out. But, but more than that, so he calls them out. But more than that, he calls them out by name. This is a, 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 a an intimate relationship. It isn't. It isn't like. Uh, well, it, it isn't like you know when I go up and visit my mother-in-law's ranch and they have a bunch of cows, and to me they all look like Bessie. <laughs> but the the shepherd here knows all of them by name. Every lamb, every sheep, he has, he has given a name, he knows them implicitly. Uh, and then there's this tremendous care for these sheep. That is the relationship of, of sheep and shepherd. Uh, and, and already at this point, we are indeed sort of pointing towards the shepherd, the good shepherd Christ. Uh, because e even a good shepherd may not have named every single one of his sheep. He knows who they are. Uh, but, but here uh, we see that, that the shepherd we're talking about, now he's, he knows them by name. He knows them as an individual person, cares for them, and yes, calls them out, and he leads out only his own. Uh, and then to lead them and to walk before them. But what is it we also hear about sheep? In, in these first few verses. Well, they follow <coughs> the voice of their own shepherd. And what do they also then do with strangers? They instinctively, <coughs> instinctively flee. So, about whom is Christ speaking in verses 1 through 5? That was so cryptic that, that the Jews who heard it, that frankly it went over their heads. Well, looking ahead a little bit, uh, who, who are the players that, that we're talking about uh, in this earliest part? The sheep are... Well, the sheep are, are are God's people, and and as we'll see in in the latter portion here, this is not as as refined or finite as the Scripture often uses God's people to limit it, um, or the thieves and the robbers. Well. Who, who, might, uh, who might you count amongst thieves and robbers of, of this, this sheepfold of, of faith, sheepfold of Christianity? Yes, Paul. The false teachers. Sure, absolutely. <coughs> it's, but it says that the sheep flee from strange voices, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. But they don't flee from false teachers, right? Because that's the problem. They're drawn to it. Well, uh, are, are we reading a little bit too far into, into the parable? Maybe. Um, it seems to fall apart. Sure. Well, it, seems, it seems to fall apart there with, with the false teachers and the strangers. Um, if anything, maybe we're talking about different sheep. If we're talking about the ones who will follow the voice of a stranger, uh, they may belong to another flock uh, if they follow a false teacher of some sort. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, that is it. But uh, but really, our, our our point in this whole uh, in this whole parable here is uh, is a little bit less on the sheet. <coughs> we're, 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 and we're welcome to discuss that. But uh, but the point is less the sheep in this parable. The point is uh, the point is more the shepherd, uh, Christ, in, in in this reading. But. Uh, but yeah, so we have we have false teachers. Who else might we have amongst thieves and robbers? I'm taking a guess. Who's who's he talking to? Oh, un unbelievers. That's a that sure. I think we could put that in there. And, and to whom is Christ talking? Who who is it that didn't understand? Who is they? Sheep, 
And Christ tells us first, I am that gate. So how is it that, that false teachers uh, try to gain access to the sheep? What's the, what's the one place that they're not going? False teachers are not going to Christ. False teachers are not going to tell you of, of the Son. The God man who became incarnate, who suffered on the cross, who died, who rose again. They're not going to go through Christ. They're not going to enter through the Word, but they will enter by any other means. False teachers will draw upon many other sources, uh, but not the door. They will not enter in or seek to reach the sheep by the door. <coughs> But Christ is also talking here, specifically at this, at this point in time, uh, to, to the Jewish leadership. And he is saying, I am the door. So how is it that the, that the Jewish leaders are not, are not going through, through the word or through Christ? And, and I think there's a, there's a related story that we have just heard in in the Gospel of John in chapter 9. And it is the, the parable of the man born blind. And it's a, it's a, it's a telling of, of, a, of a Jewish man who has had an encounter with the Jewish leadership of the day. And of course in the, in the parable, or the, in the story, the event of the man born blind that Christ healed he then is, is grilled by the Jewish leadership. How is it that you have been healed, you who have been a sinner from birth? Uh, and he says, this man was a prophet. He, he healed. They don't believe him. They don't like what he has to say. So, so the Jewish leadership calls in this young man's parents. And what do the parents say? They say, well, he's of age. You know, he can, he can tell you. He'll speak for himself. Don't, don't bother us with this one. And so they again ask this young man. And he says, oh, I, I, I don't know from whence he came. I only know what it is that he has done. Uh, and then at one point he says to them, you know, do, you, do you wish to be his disciple as well? And that is the point where the Jewish leadership casts him out. They excommunicate him. They set him apart. Uh, because they are disciples of Moses. And they do not know from whence this man, Christ, comes. And so it is that they are, they are looking not to, not to the object to whom Moses was pointing, but they are looking instead to the one who does the pointing. Uh, as, a, as a good duck hunter, right? They, they're, and I only know this on uh, on Nintendo, you know, not on the screen. Uh, but you know, instead of pointing at the little bog at the bottom of the screen and missing all the ducks in the sky, you have to look where the, the, the dog is pointing. And then, so instead of looking where the dog is pointing, these these Jewish leaders were looking to the pointer. Himself. They were looking to Moses and not to the one to whom Moses pointed. Uh, so they were going around it, not intentionally into the sheepfold by any other mean, uh, but, but by force of habit, by force of, 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 uh, of a misunderstanding, and really a blindness. Uh, and, that is, and that's the great irony of, of the parable we have in the chapter before, is that here this blind man could see and those who were not blind could not see that Jesus was Christ. But it's not just for this one little piece that I, that I mentioned, you know, chapter 9. Uh, because Christ is also characteristic of how he describes uh, shepherds in, in chapter 9. Because here is this, this man, this man who, who has a, a, a young faith. He's been healed by Christ. 
he has been cast out, uh, sent out into the wilderness. And what is it that Christ does in <laughs> chapter 9? Christ goes out. He's the one who seeks out this young man who's been cast out. Hearing that he was excommunicated from the Jewish church, he goes and seeks out this one lost sheep. Just as he tells us what the shepherd does when the one who's wandered astray to leaves the 99, and he goes out and he finds that. And so Christ indeed goes out to find this one young lost sheep uh, to bring him into uh, the fold. And of course, uh, on the other side, thinking of the sheep, this young man would not hear the voice of these strangers who were not confessing Christ, who were not confessing the word. Uh, but these voices, these, these strange men who would seek to lead him away from, uh, from, from God in flesh. So let's turn then back to, to John chapter 10 here. Uh, with, with he is the door of the sheep, all who came before me, the thieves and robbers. Um, so how how does it, how is it that you hear what what Christ is saying? Here? All who came before me were thieves and robbers. What's what's your immediate thought? Did that include Moses, Abraham, Noah? I mean, does that? Remember, there's no wrong answer, and even if it is wrong, there's the confession and absolution of Yes? Maybe he means that they were all sinners. Oh! Oh, oh, wow. A little strike of brilliance there. I had not even considered that. That's, that's really quite good. All of them were sinners. And amen, the good Lutherans in us say, well, of course they were. Absolutely. Uh, and, and this is true. Yes. Uh, <coughs> uh, so, yeah, so no, I, I, I actually quite like that. All of them were sinners. Amen. Uh, but, but all were thieves and robbers before me. Um, not really intended, you know, linguistically to be uh, a, a, a mathematical whole, inclusive of everything that has happened before Christ was incarnate. Uh, but really a representative sum of, of just the, the depravity of the present uh, religious ethos. Of, of the people of Israel, of, of God's chosen people, uh, who have, of course, wandered away several times. We have, we have a very long Old Testament compared to the New Testament. It's not because they sinned more, it's just more. It's just uh, maybe they, they were creative in, in doing them first, and we've just been copying ever since. But no, they, they strayed many, many times. Um, and, and at this point in time, the, the Jewish leadership will not hear uh, and will not see uh, the Messiah that Scripture has, has pointed to, the prophecy uh, confesses. Uh, they, they, they're so <coughs> blind by their ambition for, uh, for a Messiah of their own name strength and mind, temporal power, temporal authority, of uh, uh, vindication of, of, uh, of Jerusalem from the, uh, the conquerors who hold her captive, but, uh, but also that, that for many, uh, being thieves and robbers, which is where they, they steal and they kill and destroy, really is to talk about uh, the selfish motivations of, of, of Jewish leadership. Uh, and this really brings us then back uh, to the Old Testament prophecy of Ezekiel, where we hear about the uh, Ezekiel 34, about the, the, you know, the jeering of the sheep by the horns that the food is getting trampled underfoot, that the, the leadership uh, has, has abandoned the sheep is seeking their own self-interest, uh, which is which is sort of um, probably the best way to describe a thief 
and a robber is that they're looking out for their own self-interest. It's not necessarily that they absolutely want to kill the man in the house, but they want the things that are in there for themselves. And so some of them are, are, are murderers, some of them are thieves, some of them are robbers, um, but all those who have come before him, this, this corrupt leadership uh, that, is, that is leading away from Christ, uh, is, is looking to its own selfishness, <coughs> its own selfish ways. And that way they are thieves and robbers, stealing away from the sheep uh, the very gifts that God would have them bestow. Uh, but then he says, uh, you know, I am, again, I am the <coughs> And it's not because he didn't think of anything else to say. It's that important. He wanted to say it twice. Uh, that he is the door. And more than that, if anyone enters by him, he will be saved and will go in and out and find the pasture. So, uh, he will be, anyone who comes in by me. And so now this door is starting to change our perspective on, on the sheep and the sheep full. So, Christ is the door. Uh, what then does one enter by going through Christ the door? You have to believe in him. Yes, yes, yes. Believing in, in Jesus Christ. As our Savior. As your Savior. You enter into... The sheep flock. Think of baptism, and what is the sheep flock? Church. Well, yeah, yeah. And then, but uh, uh, perhaps in a less worldly <laughs> restrictive way, we would say the family of the family of God. Okay, I have a question. Yeah. How do you enter in and out of that? Then? Ah, how do you enter in and out of that? Amen. There we go. So yeah, so our, our sheep fold. The church with capital C. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, the family of God, the church Catholic, lowercase c, right? Capital C on church, lowercase c on Catholic, right? The church Catholic. So, how is it the one that goes in and out of that thing? Yes, well, uh, Christ has told us he's the door, but now he's talking about going in and out of, in and out of Christ. Uh, and you're not the first one to ask this question. Uh, uh, I'm not sure. Pastor, how does it you say B E D E? Do you say B or B E? How, how is oh, he it? You say B? Yeah. Okay, then I will follow your <laughs> So, so, uh, we and the writers have, have spoken and, and, uh, and, and tried to address and wrestle with this idea of going in and out. Uh, and and in, in their discussion of this, I think they agree, uh, they, they, they've talked about in and out. As uh, <coughs> I didn't write down the Latin, but I do have one. So to go to go in would be uh, to to go in with the uh, the vita contemplativa, or the vita contemplativa, uh, the, uh, the the going in the contemplative faith. Uh, that you are in Christ, in his word, uh, being acted upon by the Holy Spirit, and then exiting, uh, because we're not really departing outside of Christ, or, you know, and you go into the church, and then you go out to be apostate, and then you go into the church, and you go out. No, we're talking about uh, that when you go out, it is, it is the vita activa, uh, so that active faith. Uh, and that's sort of where, uh, where, where Aquinas and, and, and Bede fall into this, that uh, that one is the, the, the contemplative faith, and one is the active faith, going in and going out. Um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't argue strongly against them. Uh, but uh, to go in and out uh, is, is, is a very uh, uh, direct translation of a, of a kind of idiom, a, a thought of, you know, in the course of life, as you're going in and out, in and out of life, in and out of events, in and out of things. So, 
uh, perhaps it would be better for us to say that uh, as you as you live in Christ, as you live in this this church Catholic, as you live in the family of God, as you go in and out, uh, as you move and have your being, uh, that you will find pasture. Uh, that that, uh, that Christ, who is is the door on which you enter to become a sheep of this sheepfold, this family of God, you will indeed find things necessary for uh, for your body, for your soul, in the course of this life. But yes, Paul. And of course, the uh, sheepfold is only where the sheep stay at night to rest. They have to go out during the day to pasture. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever read Philip Keller's book, uh, Shepherd Looks at the 23rd Psalm? No, I don't think I have. He, Philip Keller is a South African shepherd, mm -hmm. so he lived in the, uh, for 20 years and raised sheep in conditions very similar to uh, the Middle East. To what they would have been in Jesus' day and talks about uh, the relationship between a shepherd and a sheep and guarding them. Yeah. He talks about this parable also. Okay. Uh, <laughs> is it possible at all like, where you go to communion you're receiving God's gifts and then you're not so you have to go back in to be refreshed? Oh, it's the communion rail? Is that right. what you're saying? Well, no. Actually, <laughs> like baptism or like, communion for the sacraments, is it possible to do that where you're not always going to get it out of the community? And I think that actually agrees quite nicely with, uh, with what uh, Aquinas and Peter talked about. Yeah, you're, you're talking about like that. You know, the, the, the sacraments, the means of grace, that, that you're coming to them and then uh, and going out into the world <coughs> and, and, and that you need to return for, for your food and feeding. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't see that that is necessarily excluded from, from that understanding. Yeah. I think it's certainly human. Um, but again, it's, it's this idea of, of, of life in, in Christ. Um, and again, we, we hear that this, the thieves, they come to, to kill and to destroy. Uh, but why is it that he came? Uh, was that so that we would have life and have it abundantly? And that is to say that when we come into the church, uh, we, we move from death into life. Um, and that, that, that we not only have it, but we have it in its great surplus and a great abundance. <coughs> But I think also then the next uh, the next verse is uh, is Christ's response to our our understanding as, as, as Paul sort of said that well the sheep folds only where the sheep stay at night after that you go out in the pasture uh, so if Christ is the gate then then who, who's who's leading when, he, when we go out there well that's why Christ says well okay that will has. I'm where you have your safety, your security, your life. And I'm also going to be the same God who's going to lead you out there. So yeah, I mean, I am the door. I am also the shepherd. I am both of these things. And more than that, not just the shepherd, but I am the good shepherd. Um, and the good shepherd, how is the good shepherd uh, identified? as the one who lays down his life for his sheep. And uh, if you have a whole mess of sheep, uh, is, is this a good shepherd in, in a civil sense? Let me say it another way. Is this a smart shepherd? Uh, if, if he would lay it down his life for his sheep because you see, there are a lot of sheep. One can always buy other sheep. Uh, one need not uh, sacrifice themselves so that they leave their, their wives as widows and their children <coughs> uh, So is this So is this wise behavior for an earthly shepherd? Is this really being a, a being good at your job shepherd in the worldly sense? No, no. Um, 
but that is uh, that is what distinguishes Christ as the good shepherd, uh, the good shepherd, the noble shepherd, the, the perfect <laughs> shepherd, the the shepherd from whom we understand and have the idea of the shepherds of this world. Uh, and so this good shepherd indeed lays down his life for his sheep, uh, because unlike a worldly shepherd, uh, his sheep are you and I, uh, with souls created in the image of God. Uh, and, and more than this, he lays down his own life, and as he tells us later, he also takes it up again. Uh, but this good shepherd, he lays down his life for the sheep. He loves them so intimately. He cares for them so deeply that they are the most important thing in the world to him. Sheep singular, sheep plural. Uh, this good shepherd lays down his life. And how is it that, uh, that others, other shepherds, not, not the shepherd, capital Z, uh, but other shepherds or other hirelings would behave. Uh, what is it he tells us? That, that when the wolf comes, uh, what, what are these, uh, these other shepherds or hirelings want to do? Flee. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and so in this way, they actually have quite a lot more in common with the sheep than the shepherd or the good shepherd in this case, uh, because there is that instinct, there is that instinct to flee, to run away from, from the wolf, uh, the wolf who would come to steal, to kill, and to destroy, uh, would, be, would be what the wolf desires to do. And those who are not the good shepherd, they flee, they run away, uh, they, have, they, they are apostate, uh, they'll denounce Christ, And of course, who is the wolf in this case? Who is who is prowling about? Uh, yes, amen. A wolf, a lion. Uh, he's always prowling, always standing outside the gate, always standing just beyond the distance to look for the ones who stray out, or to look for the ones who would seek to bring him in. And why is it though that the, that the higher hand, the higher hand does not <laughs> lay down his life for the sheep? Because the sheep are not, they're not his own. He doesn't know them all by name. He has been paid to lead them, paid to care for them. Uh, but again, it's a motivation of a worldly necessity or self-interest, uh, but not because of them. Not because of a, of a deep relationship of concern. And that's really the point I think that Christ is making here is that, is that shepherd and sheep, with the good shepherd and we his sheep, there is an intimacy, a relationship, a, a great care and concern, uh, uh, a relationship that's not bought or transacted, uh, but a relationship that, that, that exists as as one who loves. And so let's, let's look at that and how is it that, that this relationship, this knowledge of sheep and shepherd is described? And what verse is that? Uh, verse 14, I am the good shepherd, I know my own, my own know me. And now we have that comparison. How is it that the shepherd and the sheep have a relationship just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. So it is an intimate knowledge. It is a relationship. Uh, not just a familiarity, but a knowing. A knowing of, of, of your essence, of, of your character. Uh, a, a deep and intimate knowledge that, that, uh, that is, that is a, I think, honestly, probably well described especially for our, our own ears in this language, uh, as, as love. 
And so it is that he lays down his life for the sheep. But, uh, but we are also then told you know, he has other sheep that are not of this fold. So these other sheep that he had, not of this fold, what is this fold that he's talking about? Uh, remember who Christ is talking to. He's talking to, uh, to the Jewish leadership of the day. And he's saying, I have other sheep that are not of this fold. The Jewish people. And so this fold would be the Jewish people. Yeah. <coughs> so this fold would be the people of Israel. And so he has other sheep that are not of this fold. The other sheep being... I'm sorry, I heard a lot of answers, but not not no. Gentiles. Gentiles, yes. Gentiles, strangers, foreigners, uh, the people who are not of Israel, uh, they also are his sheep. He knows them by name, just as God knows every single one of us by name, knowing us in the womb before. Before we were born, knit us together to know us. Uh, whether or not you are in a, a Jewish family, a Muslim family, an atheist family, a Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod family, God knows you in the womb, and he knows you by name. But he has these other sheep, the sheep who will listen to his voice. And of course, remember, it's not just uh, the Gentiles, but there are other 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 sheep will say, uh, because there are also the most the most uh, vile and despicable people you'll find in the in the New Testament, those darn Samaritans, uh, who worship on a different method. <coughs> uh, these these people are also those other sheep, uh, and there will be then. One flock and one shepherd. Uh, but I'd like to, to turn our heads back to, as we were saying, how Christ is both the gate and the shepherd. Uh, think of, of, the, uh, of the woman at the well and what Christ says to her. The time is coming uh, when you will not worship on that mountain or any other mountain will worship in spirit and in truth. There will be one flock and one shepherd. This gate is no longer going to be the temple in Jerusalem or this mountain in the distance. It's not going to be in one singular place. There will not be one place, one building, one gate. There will not be this, uh, uh, this, this one sheepfold, this one group of people that can worship God, Israel. Uh, but instead, there will be one flock and one shepherd. Uh, the, the, the gate will, will, will become the thing that moves with you. The, the temple in Jerusalem will stand up and walk and lead you. Lead you in your goings in and comings out. Uh, that which was the one place where God would reside will now always be with you because God has come down to be with you, to be that one shepherd that is both a place and the person, uh, that is God amongst us, God dwelling with us. Uh, and so it was for this reason that the Father <laughs> loves me. And, and this actually I sort of struggled with quite a bit because uh, it, it sounds sort of causative. Uh, for this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life and take it up again. Um, and it sounds like, well, because I'm going to lay down my life and take it up again, that's why the Father loves me. That's sort of how that first natural reading goes out. Uh, but as I was, as I was reading uh, other commentators, other learned theologians, and and really just wrestling with it. It is not a causative, but it is the means by which Christ lays down his life and takes it up again. 
for this reason, the reason that I may be able to live in my life, that I may be able to take that up again, that I may suffer and die on behalf of the sheep, and I will be raised again by the Father, that just as I have risen, all of you will rise. It is for the reason of this, for this purpose, that the Father loves me, His love, the love that is communicated within the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, that love is what motivates the atonement. It is what motivates <coughs> Christ being born as a man. It's what motivates God, the Son, to willfully go to the cross, to suffer and die on our behalf, on everyone behalf to reconcile the world. It is that love that motivates him to die, that the Father raises him up. Uh, it, is, it is in that love that motivates the whole redemption, not of just this one flock, but of all the sheep and every flock to be redeemed, to, to be restored that his voice will be the one that we hear. Uh, that his staff will be the one we fall. Uh, and it is uh, it is a good a good perhaps a good close uh, for our scripture study today, and a good close for our our verses. Uh, that as we as we uh, disband this morning. For divine service on the fourth Sunday of Advent, the last Sunday in Advent, uh, that, that we look towards uh, the incarnation of Christ, also in mind with the charge that he has received from his Father, uh, the atonement on the cross, by which he redeems us, by which he makes us one flock and one shepherd gate and shepherd for us. So we do have two minutes of burning questions or a brilliant thought. You can slap the table and say the Holy Spirit spoke to you just like David Skinner. Well, in that case, um, let us then close with a brief word of prayer. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that in your deep abiding love given us your Son, as we look to commemorate his birth on this coming Christmas day, we ask that your Holy Spirit be upon us, that our minds, our hearts, our lips, and our hands may be always about your work, as we live in perpetual attitude, <coughs> copy of your coming, in the means of grace, and our eyes are ready, ready for your final coming. And you will come to glory to redeem and restore all the world. Grace us all that we may live and serve you in your kingdom that shall have no end. Be with us this morning and guard all of us who are traveling to family. Guard and keep safe the family that travels to us that we may enjoy uh, you renewed by our family and friends in, in your name this Christmas Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, we